Well, it goes without saying, my friends, that I'm going to do some sort of a tribute uh, to uh, Howard Zinn. Howard Zinn was an activist uh, who stood behind his, his words, um, not just through writings, but through his own actions. And those in, involved direct actions. The, he... Uh, He's mostly described, I guess, as a university professor. But before he took that route, he was arrested many, many times. And even while he was a professor, he was arrested many times. His most important contributions were in the realm of human rights, the... Uh, civil rights movement in the South and uh, also basically safeguarding the Pentagon Papers which were about to be published by the New York Times when Daniel Ellsberg um, was himself under the threat of arrest uh, during that time. So you know, some, some, I'm getting some messages from some people who have told me, you know, Howard Zinn was basically just a, ba uh, just a, uh, a gatekeeper. He wasn't a gatekeeper. He basically broke those gates down for most of his life. And he was a tireless advocate for human rights and justice all over the planet. It wasn't just his writings and his intrinsic examination of this entire myth of American exceptionalism, you know. He opened up an avenue of new ideas and um, his equivalent, his equivalent um, is pretty much George Carlin. And he did it in a very humorous way, in, in a way that reached more people, perhaps, outside of academic circles, I might add. But it's basically, the, in, the, the entire sentiment was the same, you know. So... Two of these people are dead now, George Carlin and Howard Zinn, and, uh, you know, 20 years from now or something. Um, we will live in a world in which these voices are probably, although they have always been marginalized, become completely unheard. At that point, you know, and we're already seeing this, is uh, the sorts of corporate jokes going on, trashing the poor, and uh, celebrating Wall Street, and uh, basically blaming the people and human nature overall for trying to stand up for at least something good, you know. There are other writers and publicists out there, it's all still, still on the internet, <laughs> which will become increasingly controlled via the fast lane or the slow lane. You'll have to have enough money, probably, to subscribe to dissenting views. And those dissenting views are going to be watched by those in power, of course, since they have the money to observe us, after all. Those in solidarity with us 
will no longer have the financial means to log on to various blogs or vlogs on the internet in years to come because it will become a luxury to hear the truth. Now, those in power, the powers that be, know the truth. They are very much exposed to it at every point. They can hear it. They're privy to it. And they seek to basically silence those of us who point it out. Because to do otherwise in the short run is not going to be profitable. All that counts on Wall Street is essentially short-term profits and short-term confidence. And, you know, Hank Paulson, <laughs> Hank Paulson, I'll do a video about his opinions, um, possibly tonight, is now spouting off the latest governmental conspiracy theory out there for anybody who still cares to listen that it was the Russians and the Chinese who, who basically were instrumental in bringing about our own economic crash. This this theory is so laughable coming from Paulson, I may have to follow it up in another video. I mean, even, even though whatever I say won't make a difference, you know. Not anymore, not after this Supreme Court decision. We're all basically screwed now, so. For whatever it's worth, I'm still going to get it out there because you never know what's going to happen next. Maybe 30 years from now, somebody will rise up and say, enough is enough. Right now, that's most definitely not happening.